Now in this part of the question then, we're told that there's a point Q on the curve C, that's the red graph here, where the tangent at Q is perpendicular to the tangent at P. So what that means essentially is that there's going to be a point here, I would say, just estimating this, let's call that Q, where if we were to draw the tangent at Q, let's just come down through here, something like that, okay, but this angle in here, the green line and the blue line, would intersect at right angles, 90 degrees. So we've got that situation. We've got to find the x-coordinate of Q. Well, we've got to show, in fact, that the x-coordinate of Q is a third bracket 2 plus root 6. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, essentially, what we should know is that a bit of background information that is, that the product of these two gradients should come to minus 1. The product of two perpendicular gradients is always minus 1. Look, if we had the gradient of Q, in other words, multiplied by the gradient of P, it should equal minus 1. So from this, I can get the gradient of Q as being minus 1 over the gradient of P. So I'll get the gradient of Q, then all I need to do is that I know that the gradient of Q would be the gradient of the tangent, and I can then put dy by dx equal to that gradient and solve it for x. Okay, well let me just run through it, okay, that might have been uh, a bit garbled there, but uh, we'll just see how we go, alright? So first of all then, we're going to get the gradient of Q from the gradient of P. Now we know that the gradient of the tangent was 3. We found that as well in the previous part of the question. So we can say that the gradient, let's just say gradient of Q equals well, if the gradient of P was 3, the gradient of Q must be minus 1 third by this result. Now that means that the gradient of the tangent at Q would be minus a third. And the gradient at any point on the curve is given by dy by dx. So what we can say is that when dy by dx equals minus a third, we can set up an equation. So when dy by dx equals minus a third, therefore what we have is that 3x squared minus 4x minus 1 must equal minus a third. And we can solve this for x. How do we solve it? Well, one of the best things we could do is to get rid of this 3 here and that would be to times through by 3 to both sides. So that's going to give 9x squared minus 12x minus 3 equals minus 1. And if I have 1 to both sides now, I'm going to have 9x squared minus 12x and then minus 2 equals 0. Now, as I said earlier, what we have to show is that the x-coordinate of Q, that's down here, let's just mark it on here. The x-coordinate of Q, we have to show, is one-third bracket 2 plus root 6. Now, having an answer like this does seem to suggest that this quadratic equation here is not going to factorise. So, one way that we could solve this quadratic equation is by using the quadratic formula. Hopefully you're familiar with the quadratic formula. Remember if you've got ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, then x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. Alright, so we're going to need to use this formula here. a is 9, b is minus 12, c is minus 2. So if we use the quadratic formula, x will equal 
minus b, so that's going to be minus minus 12, so that's 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's going to be minus 12 all squared, minus 4 times a, which is 9, times c, which is minus 2, and that's all divided by 2 times a, 2 times 9 in other words. Right, well, if you work this out, now, we haven't got much room, so what I'm going to do now is just remove this section here, just to give us some room. So with that done, what we'll do is we'll just come down here. Now if we work this out, we've got x equals 12 plus or minus the square root of, and then this comes to 216, and that's all divided by 18. Now, 216 can be broken down. That is the same as 36 times 6. How did I know that it was going to be something like that? Well, I got a clue here from the root 6. All right, So I knew that 6 had to go into 216 if I stood any chance. And 6 into 216 goes 36 times. So this is going to be exactly the same as 12 plus or minus the square root of 36 times 6. And that's all divided by 18. Now, square root of 36 is going to be 6, so this is 6 root 6. So we've got 12 plus or minus 6 root 6, all divided by 18. Now what I could do is pull out 6 as a common factor and therefore I've got x equals 6 bracket and then we'll have 2 plus or minus root 6 all divided by 18. Now the 6 cancels once into that and 3 times into that. So what we have got then is that x equals 2 plus or minus root 6. Now we can't have the minus root 6 because that will give us a negative value of x and x is greater than 0. So what we've got then is just the plus version. So we've got 2 plus root 6 all divided by 3 since x had to be greater than 0. So therefore what we have got is the coordinates of q have to be equal to one third bracket 2 plus root 6. So that just brings us nicely then to the end now of this question.